Israel, were you expecting more out of him? Like, when you guys got started, you're landing those leg kicks, you're following your game plan, you're doing your thing, but in every fight we've seen leading up to this, he gets aggressive. He tries to box you, he tries to press you. There was about one moment I felt like he had you up against the fence and you got right out. Did you expect more coming from him? Mm, I already knew I fucked up his leg up at that time. I already knew because his poker face wasn't enough. I could feel his energy. And people think when I say energy, I'm some hippie, blah, 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 crystals, which I am sometimes. But I energies don't lie. Your face can lie. Numbers can even lie. But energy never lies. And I could feel him, and I knew that he wasn't about that life. When I pushed and pulled, like, the ocean of, you know, the waves of the ocean, it just it, it just didn't work. And I was like, I know he's not doing the, the things he wanted to do. So, yeah, I just felt his energy. I knew, take my time. I'm mm -hmm. fit. And I could feel him gassing. I looked in the corner when in, the, in, the, in the end of the first round. I could see he's sitting down. And I was telling my coach, yep. Breathing into my diaphragm, not breathing into my chest, and I could see him. And he started doing all that, and waiting. Exactly, yeah. I told you, do the same. Try, Romero tried to do, and I had the I had the master plan for it. So I want to watch it again. I want to go back and watch. Do I have a replay? Play it again. I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're going to be seeing plenty of the highlights of this one. And uh, at what point, I mean, when you landed that head kick, were you surprised he was able to take it? And did you know that that was sort of going to be the beginning of the end for you? He was slow, bro. Honestly, he yeah. was slower than I thought. Like, because the highlights, I'm faster on TV as well. But in real life, I could feel him. He was slow. Um, when he, he loads up on his kick, he hit me in the ribs twice. <laughs> Man, nothing. Yeah. I ate that. Um, he didn't touch me on the face once. Still pretty. And yeah, looking yeah, good, I man. I could see him. I could see him, man. I, everything. And I cut him, and I was like, you have a little something, a little <laughs> a little spot over here. And as my shin, my skinny shins sliced him open like a katana blade. Let's talk about two and a half years ago, February of 2018, in Australia. That's when you break into the UFC. How would you describe this run that you've been on? Nine fights. It's happened so quickly, and yet you're such a bona fide champion. I said it. Y'all must have forgot. Y'all must have forgot, like Roy Jones, man. And that's one thing. Shout out to Teddy Atlas. He was um, the night after the wins. I happened to just be scrolling on YouTube, and I saw he broke down the Gaslam fight, and I was like, ah. Oh. And I played it at first, and I was like, hold on, let me play the fight. And, and I queued it up, and I was watching it. And to hear someone who was that vetted in boxing watch my fight and talk about my striking, I was, I, was, I, was, I was impressed with what he was able to notice, the traps I was setting, but also some of the things that I wasn't doing. He, he compared me to Roy Jones and Ali and some other greats in the game and what I'm doing. And, yeah, he says he wants to be on the show, but I feel like I wouldn't really be the best get. He should either have Mike Angove or Eugene Behrman on the show, and they can actually chop it up and really dissect the striking game, even in MMA, because right. it was beautiful. And, yeah, I don't even know what question you asked. I'm just rambling. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> that's okay. You're the champ. Obviously, you have been confident the entire time, and certainly we're confident that you could end it before the five rounds tonight. But... Did you expect it to just go into the second round? How did you expect this fight to unfold? I round one or yeah. round four. That's what I thought. I thought I'll just slow cook him. But okay. then by the second round, I knew his leg was couldn't push up. You know, he couldn't bridge. He never really bridges anyway. And I told you, he only fights human punching bags. Guys, they just, oh, oh, no. Oh, oh. And they just let him unload on them. I'm like, bro, I'm not. Do I look like a punching bag to you? I'm not fat enough. I'm skinny, bro. <laughs> uh, Israel. City kickboxing, this team, these warriors you came in here with, your team was riding with you tonight. How important is that as a man, as a fighter, to have these guys and have your back and, and just that, that bond that you guys have coming into this fight this, this, this week in particular? It's unmatchable, to be honest, man. Like, we locked down in the gym. That, I told you guys, was the catalyst. You know, unfortunately, some of my teammates couldn't get it done because – one of them didn't make weight, their opponents. Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, USADA or whoever we need to talk to, 30% is not enough because these guys will take that cut just to get a win. You know what I mean? These guys will take that cut just to get a win, and it's not enough. We need to make it 80% or 90% of your purse goes to, to, to your opponent, no matter what level you are. Even if you're making $5 million, 90% of that goes to your opponent. I guarantee you people will make weight. How about a message to John Jones, who was watching along? He oh, was no, active on social time? media what tonight. What did he say this time? What did he tell I, uh, I don't know. What, what did he said specific jealous? to you? Obviously, he had his eye on the 205-pound title fight before yours. Uh -huh. But your thoughts on John Jones? You've been kind of talking about that. This as a John Jones is about me tonight. You see this? I'm a champ. I'm a champ, and I'm building my legacy. Understand that. And I'm doing everything. Like I said, Anderson Silva was the, the reigning king for such a long time, doing his thing. A little show here at 205 off back, UFC 101 goes on there, does the matrix, boom, and then go back to middleweight. I'm doing my thing. I'm living my legacy according to me, and no one is ever going to force me to move my hand. I forced Pohachina to show me his hand at the weigh-in stare-down. I forced him to show me his hand, and I could read that, and I'm telling you, not even you 
can make me show my hand. <laughs> uh, you also called your shot as to what might be next for that belt. Jared Cannonier. why is he the guy? He's a dark horse. Mm -hmm. Beautiful dark horse of the division. I love his style. I love his revamp, his resurrection at middleweight. I like what he's doing. I really like what he's doing. And I said, I've already whooped Robert Whitaker, so I can do it again if you want for a third time because I knocked him twice, knocked him out twice in that first fight. But if Jared Kananiya gets it done against Robert Whitaker, I want him next. It'll be an honor. We'll do that. Naruto and Sasuke, he knows. You mentioned Teddy Atlas. He had a tweet about you as well. A lot of praise coming at you uh, right here. It ended with Adesanya faster and more versatile, but it started with him getting into Costa's head, got him to be mad and do just what he wanted him to do. Just walk in, brilliant special. Tell the casuals that, Teddy. Teddy <laughs> Atlas, tell the casuals around the world that. Who's mad now? They were all saying, oh, Israel's so mad. Why you gotta, dude, just take the joke, bro. Just take the gift, bro. Bro, I'm a white belt for life. I'm telling you. I might be a blue belt. Shout out to Andre Gavar for the blue belt, but I'm a white belt for life, and I want to stay that way. If it was up to me, I'd stay a white belt. He was talking. I black I'm a white belt, belt too. Hey, yeah. respect, yeah. my yeah. man. <laughs> white belts got to stick together. Us yeah. white belts got to stick hey, together. That's right. You know we the do. vibe. You know the vibe. But yeah, I'm right. telling you, man. Yeah. Same Scratch rank. all that. Same rank, guys. Yeah. 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 Get out of here. I'll stripe. Teach me to be as cool as you. And just then, be you, then bro. We'll honestly, I'm telling you. I know. Just be you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Also, I want to say this fight, I shout out this fight to everyone. I dedicate this fight to everyone who's ever being picked on or bullied in your life. Any kid. I didn't have social media like you guys do right now, but I'm telling you, man, this fight, his demeanor it reminded me of any bully I've ever faced in my life. And I was saying, I got to take the bite out of the bully. I got to take the bite out of the bully. I, and, and I know sometimes your boss might be riding you or you might not be able to, even at home, your dad might be a bully to you. But I'm telling you, this fight was for you guys. And I was saying, I'm going to punch all my bullies in the face tonight. And guess what I did? Boom, right in the kisser. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.